hello everyone in today's video we will be discussing about uh, pressure source so as we all know pressure source is a very exhaustive topic uh, for the sake of convenience uh, i have divided it into three videos uh, in today's video we will be discussing the pre operative assessment uh, of uh, bed sore patients in the subsequent two videos we will decide uh, we will discuss about uh, multiple options of reconstruction the principles of flap planning for reconstruction and then subsequently we will discuss about various clinical scenarios uh, for bed sore reconstruction so coming to pre operative assessment uh, probably the most important thing while managing pressure sores is the pre operative assessment because if we have not assessed the patient appropriately pre operatively our pressure sore reconstruction is uh, going to fail because a lot of factors in the pre operative assessment are important so first and foremost is adequate nutrition so we need to take care of the macronutrients as well as the micronutrients which are important from uh, the wound healing point of view and we all as uh, as we all know uh, just surgery and dressings are not going to heal the wounds it is the systemic environment of the patient which is going to take care of the wound healing so we should assess preoperatively uh, clinically as well as by investigations whether the proteins are adequate macronutrients and micronutrients are adequate before we undertake any reconstructive procedure secondly control of systemic and uh, local infection is very important in bed sores as we all know there are a lot of systemic factors which are uh, going to delay our wound healing so as far as possible we try to optimize the patient uh, and control these systemic factors uh, so that our post operative course is uneventful and uh, the wound healing is optimized pre op and post op relief of pressure is very important because we know that pressure causes pressure sores and unless that particular part is taken care of unless offloading is taken care of our reconstructive procedure is bound to fail and there will be a relapse and recurrence of uh, pressure sore so we need to make sure that uh, preoperatively offloading is possible which can be continued in the post operative period as well one of the most important yet overlooked fact is the spasm and the spasticity of these patients of uh, bed sore uh bed sore patients because of uh, trauma and because of other reasons might have some amount of spasticity and control of this spasticity is very important for two reasons firstly because of the spasticity if it is if it remains uncontrolled it subsequently develops into contractures because of the spasm and spasticity is difficult to position the patient uh in our desired position say for example if we have done a, a flap for a sacral pressure sore and because of that uh, spasm and spasticity we are not able to position the patient in a prone position then the offloading is not possible there will be weight over our flap in the post operative period and it will fail so we need to take care of uh, spasm and spasticity in the pre operative period maybe by use of baclofen or other other mortalities which are available the second thing which is important from point of view of uh, spasm and spasticity is that because of the spasm of the muscles it causes continuous tension over the suture line and this tension over the suture line uh, sort of gives way the suture line anyways we know that uh, pressure sores are bound to recur uh, there is very high chance of recurrence and if it is super added with some spasticity Uh, the suture line tends to give way so that is why we need to preoperatively take care of the spasticity and i would say spasticity is a relative contraindication for doing a reconstructive procedure for a uh, bed sore then shearing forces are uh, uh, as we know uh, they causes the shearing forces cause the disruption of the small musculocutaneous perforators uh, because of the uh, constant mobility of the overlying skin over the underlying bony prominences so as far as possible shearing forces should be taken care of the bed sheet of the patient should be without any wrinkles uh, we might uh, apply spirit 
to the back and the buttock region obviously not over the wound because it is a ruby patient it causes hardening of the skin so that all also needs to be taken into consideration and positioning as we have already discussed we need to see that the patient is able to be positioned in our desired position after surgery uh, for example if the patient is tracheostomized uh, and we are not able to give a prone position to the patient uh, then the purpose of the flap is defeated it is going to uh, lead to a breakdown so these are a couple of points in preoperative assessment which need to be taken care of and unless preoperative assessment is thorough and we are sure that all these things are taken care of uh, we shouldn't go ahead with uh, reconstructive procedures now coming to our principles of non surgical management just a quick uh, review of all we have uh, already discussed a uh, thorough clinical assessment and a complete diagnosis is important because without that our uh, reconstructive plans are not going to work adequate control and relief of precipitating factors which include uh, the optimization of the diet optimization of the local wound status by thorough debridement antibiotics accordingly are the corner stores of uh, successful pressure sore coverage uh then uh, as we have already discussed taking care of the spasticity uh, is important to have a good outcome and uh, if i were to sum this all up if a pressure sore is getting worse it is not the time to attempt closure by this i do not mean that it is not a time to do debridements it is just not a time to do flaps Uh, this is a time when we need to adequately debride the wound uh, maybe apply wax dressings uh, do other type of dressings optimize the patient systemically and then go ahead for a definitive uh, closure of that particular wound so these are the principles we should uh, adhere to while managing a pressure sore uh, regarding role of anesthesia uh, i would first like to make a small comment about role of bedside debridement so bedside debridement is a big no uh, because the patients of uh, bed sores tend to have some autonomic dysfunction and because of the autonomic dysfunction what happens is that uh, uh, these blood vessels do not go into spasm appropriately adequately there is a lot of blood loss which is going to happen if we do a bedside debridement so at the most what we can do is a bedside desluffing without uh, radical debridement where there are chances of blood loss that is why uh, bedside debridements should not be done in case of pressure sores then uh, airway should be optimized no procedure for bed sore should be performed without uh, optimizing the airway because the positioning is a bit difficult in pressure sores we need to change the position intraoperatively as well so airway is a must now a lot of uh, uh, anesthetists especially the young ones say that uh, the patient is already anesthetized there are no sensations below the waist then why don't you do it under local anesthesia or probably without any anesthesia as well so here we should be aware of this condition called as autonomic dysfunction and to be more specific the term which comes to my mind right now is autonomic dysreflexia so especially in cases of spinal cord injury uh, what happens is that even below the level of the spinal cord injury uh, there is uncontrolled sympathetic discharge on stimulation whenever there is a particularly really painful stimuli uh, for the purpose of debridement then there is uncontrolled sympathetic discharge and which causes autonomic dysreflexia and can be uh, life threatening so that is the reason why these patients of uh, bed sore should be always be addressed under appropriate anesthesia and not uh, without any an anesthesia then positioning for anesthesia is also very important because the patient is going to be anesthetized going to be totally sedated in that particular position for maybe around 1 and 1/2 to 2 to 2 and 1/2 hours and that is going to cause further pressure over the pressure sores uh, over the pressure areas where there is underlying bone and uh, this should be avoided so appropriate padding should be done while positioning the patient for anesthesia
Now these were the quick pointers that I thought of uh, regarding uh, anesthesia. Uh, I think that was all about the preoperative assessment and the anesthesia part of it, which I wanted to just some quick points. In the subsequent videos, we will see the principles of flap reconstruction, when we should use a muscle flap, when we should use a, a fasciocutaneous flap and some of the advantages and disadvantages and principles of reconstruction. And then again, uh, in the subsequent videos, we will also see uh, different clinical scenarios where uh, various flaps can be planned. Thank you for watching.